My name is Jeff Pride. I'm the Deputy Director of Centre for Quantum Dynamics at Griffith University. And we're here in my lab, which is the Quantum Optics and Information Lab. The Big Bell Test is a uh, test of quantum physics which uses human randomness to, as an input for the measurement settings. One of the features of the Big Bell Test is that we're going to use people's free will to generate random numbers which can be input to the measurement settings of the experiment. Now what's really cool about that is not only uh, are we considering you know, people's participation in an experiment through their free will, but also uh, people are getting a chance to participate real time in real scientific experiments happening here at Griffith University and in a number of other places all around the world. Our Big Bell test experiment will be testing something called quantum steering. Steering was a prediction of Einstein and his colleagues didn't believe that when you measure one quantum particle, its partner far away would be affected. They came up with a scenario which aimed to prove that this was crazy and inconsistent with the theory of relativity. The quantum steering test actually will test to see whether this is true or not. So the aim of the steering test will be to find out whether the one particle can affect its remote partner a long way away. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make measurements on one of the particles and the measurements will be determined from the random string of numbers that come from people's Big Bell test input data. And then we'll look at the other particle and see whether the measurements on that side correspond or not to the first set. And we'll know whether steering is correct or not and we'll know whether Einstein's perception of quantum mechanics was right right or wrong. These kinds of quantum tests give us the tools we need to de design new kinds of computers, new kinds of communication systems that are based on the rules not of ordinary classical physics like we use now, but of the weird properties of quantum physics. Uh, this is the experimental arrangement that we'll be using for the Big Bell test. The first part is a photon source down here at this end. We generate a pair of entangled photons. So a laser is routed around this way and shines onto a nonlinear crystal which generates a pair of entangled photons. Those entangled photons spread out from the source and one is reflected this way and coupled into an optical fibre and the other one is reflected in this direction and coupled into a different optical fibre. Those optical fibres then go off to other parts of the experiment. Once they're in these glass pipes, we can take them anywhere we want. Moving down this way, we've got some experimental apparatus which we used previously to test quantum randomness in a different way. But for the measurement on November the 30th at the Big Bell Test, we'll be measuring the photons down here at this end of the apparatus. Uh, the random data that people generate and send to us will come through the computers and that data will come down through these wires and be used to control the measurement settings which determines which polarizations we measure of the photons. And the two photons will be detected and we'll see if the state of one of them is connected or correlated to the state of the other one, whether quantum steering is a real thing or not. Yeah, one of the things that we work on is using entanglement, these quantum connections between particles as a resource for communicating information securely over a long distance. There's some, some rules of quantum physics that say if two particles are entangled and you can prove that that's really the case, then any message that's used from that shared data uh, must be absolutely secure. And the challenge is how can you share that entanglement over a really long distance? How can you send those photons far apart and not lose them, being absorbed by the atoms in an optical fiber, for example? How can you get around those kinds of problems? That's what we're working on. But as part of doing those tests, we actually test quantum steering in our lab almost every day. Ah yeah, so the room's noisy because in the background we've got a pump running. It's basically the pump for a refrigerator which cools our photon detectors down to really low temperature, just one degree above absolute zero. It's minus 272 degrees. The detectors are really cold and they've got an electrical current flowing through them. When they heat up just the tiniest amount by a single photon being absorbed, that current gets interrupted and we can read out an electrical signal. That's how we can count photons one by one. Well, I think scientists actually don't know for sure. We're still determining that. We're arguing about it, trying out different ideas, testing them in the lab, trying to think of new ways of looking at the problem. 
Some people think that uh, the two particles are, are connected by uh, some mysterious long-range force uh, that exists at the quantum level and that we don't really understand. Other people think that they have real states that are determined beforehand and uh, before they get sent apart from each other and uh, measuring one tells us something about the other. We know that there are certain rules on what can and can't be true and no matter which way you look at it, it's really weird compared to our ordinary everyday intuition. So something strange is going on. We know the maths of quantum physics, we understand how it works, but what does it mean? That's still an open question.